Hey guys, this is Steve with homebrewvideos.com and today we're going to continue our discussion on different types of fermenters that are out there for homebrewers to use. So up to now in the last two videos we covered plastic bucket fermenters and in the last video we talked about glass carboy fermenters. So today we're going to talk about the next generation of fermenting vessels and that is the plastic carboy. Uh, more traditionally people call it the better bottle, it's because it's the main company that makes these. These are fantastic, these are what I prefer to use and let's go over the pros and cons of them. So first off, it's lightweight. It weighs almost nothing. It's made of uh, you know, flexible plastic, so it's not as hard as glass, which means it's not gonna break. Uh, it'll give in, it'll flex a little bit. It is clear, so it's easy to see through. You can visually monitor fermentation, check, you know, just see how healthy your yeast is doing. Is it, is it clumping, you know, is it falling out of suspension? Uh, that's, so it's, it's clear like glass, not as clear, but clear enough to really see what's going on. Uh, they do also sell these handles that clip onto the neck that make it easy to carry with one hand. Uh, so lots of pros, but by far the biggest strength of using a plastic bucket fermenter like this is the plastic spigot here. So what this allows you to do is, it's like just a tap. It's gravity driven, and you pull it up, and all it does is open and gravity will flush beer out of the spigot at the bottom. So this makes transferring your beer a breeze. You don't have to worry about getting the siphon in here and pumping it out. All you gotta do is hook up a hose to the spigot right here and it, gravity will do the rest of the work for you. You know, taking a sample of your beer for your hydrometer is just a piece of cake because all you gotta do is, I just take my hydrometer and hook it right up to here and just take a little reading and that's it. Fill it up, you can taste it. And you have no risk of contaminating your beer because this is flowing outward, there's no flow back into there, so you're not going to infect any beer inside by, you know, pouring some out of the spigot, and the top stays sealed up the entire time you're taking readings, so just very little risk of infection. Now, there are of course some cons. This is at the high end of our uh, expenses here, so of the three types of fermenters, this is by far the most expensive. You can get the base one, or even this one that has a hole drilled here for the spigot, for about the same price as a, as a glass carboy. It's about 30, 35 bucks. But where they really get you is with the spigot and other attachments you can buy for this. Um, this whole spigot assembly here with this inner piece and outside faucet here is going to run you anywhere from 30 to 60 bucks just for that. So you can be in, you know, close to 100 bucks for one of these. Um, the, the plastic itself is softer, so it can become scratched. I do notice some scratches up here, but that's mainly from using a carboy brush to clean the inside. So that is another negative that you have to use a brush to get to the inside. It doesn't have the big open area that the plastic bucket fermenter did. Um, it's more gas permeable than the glass carboys that we talked about in the last video. So you don't really want to set a beer in here for months at a time. If you need to do that, you want to use glass. Uh, because there will be more exchange of gas through the plastic than with glass. Uh, but overall, this is my favorite type to use. It's just so easy to carry around, to work with. There's no danger of it shattering and killing me. <laughs> um, it's, the spigot just makes so much sense to use to take readings, to transfer the beer. It's just so nice to use. So that wraps up our discussion of the different types of fermenters that are out there for home brewers to use. I hope you guys found this helpful. You know, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, all in all, again, this is my favorite type of fermenter to use. If I'm aging something for a long time, I do use a glass carbo instead. And to be honest with you, I only use my plastic bucket fermenter these days for I create a sanitized solution, and that's where I sanitize things on, on brew day. So. so remember, for more tips and tricks on everything you need to get started with homebrewing, visit homebrewvideos.com and remember to sign up for our free newsletter to get all the cool goodies we give away. This is Steve with homebrewvideos.com. Thanks for watching.